Where did you go today? Where did you do the hand harvesting? Huh? Trevine. Trevine, oh right. Got a decent amount. Yeah, it was better than what I thought it would guys would get. So you got your, your dulse, your red type of seaweed, usually called the bacon of the sea as well. It's quite tasty. How about you? Do you want to give it a go? Yeah? yeah. Being part of Currymore, for me, it's incredibly important because we wanted to make a difference with how the world is around us. I've got two young kids, um, and I think that's really cemented the importance for me. Currymore started really as an idea. We as a family just happened to be talking about what the future holds for us all. I, over the years, could see you know plastic pollution and just various things with climate change happening to these beautiful places that I hold so dearly. You know that's kind of where we came across the sort of the name for the love of the sea, and that kept on popping up over and over. Um, and I spoke to a, a friend of mine who is Welsh and came up with Kari Moor. An ocean farm, it might be a very strange concept to, to a lot of people. And so we, we kind of like to use the word ocean garden. So if you can imagine walking down a coastline today and you look out to the sea here in St. David's on the Ramsey Sound, you'll see a few lines of buoys that's floating out there quite close to each other in the water. And it's not just what's on top of it, but it's really what's underneath it that you need to kind of try and envision, if you will. Between these buoys, we'll have these headlines, and from these headlines is where the seaweed's growing down from. And then from the buoys down itself will be these nets called lantern nets. And it's got these shelves, and on these shelves are where the shellfish are growing on. So we've got our scallops that's growing on there, got our uh, oysters that's on there. And then between the lines as well, you've got these really thick furry ropes, if you will, that, that hangs all the way down as well. And that's our mussel ropes, and they will capture sort of the mussel spat that flows down in the water. So it's all these bind species that, that are growing together and creates this incredibly beautiful habitat under the water. These species actually look after each other, so one's waste is another's food. The main thing is it's a marine ecosystem, yeah. Um, and if this wasn't here, then all this life wouldn't be here. So, um, yeah, it's extraordinary. Th this is uh, sugar kelp at the end of the season. Um, it's already been harvested on two occasions. And then this is taken and dried, uh, ready for the refinery, the seaweed refinery. So this is this has all been hand harvested, um, and this will just be down to what actual orders have come in. So we want to make sure that it's sustainable as much as possible. So we usually would go down and find where you know there hasn't been any harvesting done before, because we've got to give them time to to regrow again. So there's a range of different seaweeds. They're generally categorised into reds, browns, and greens. An example of a, one of the in my opinion, the best red seaweed is dulse. It's just really, really good for, for cooking. Um, it's quite strong in flavour. And using that in oils or um, pasta dishes is, is really good, really flavour enhancing, but whilst also a product that's actually healthy for you. Um, and then if you look at something more like bladder rack, so you might have seen it, it's one of those brown seaweeds and it has a serrated rack. They have almost bladders on them that are full of, of a gel. And that's really, really good for arthritis and for eczema. So that, if you put it in a bath, have loads and loads of it in, in the bath with you at warm temperature, all the gel sort of seeps out and it has really high moisturising properties. Or weed, which is another brown seaweed that is really, really strong. Um, and so the fibres from that are really good for, for bioplastics and for things like creating flower pots. And then the best thing, obviously, is that it's fully decomposable and you can leave it there rather than a bit of single-use plastic that's going to be there forever. like people are getting on board with it you know the collaborations they've made they've got like a with the brewery just down the road they've done a kelp lager whether you're eating it using it in the bath whether you're using it as a supplement it's in soap or in beer like there's so many different ways of getting it into the conversation really and that's the amazing thing with the community business they want it to develop and create jobs and things like that for long term and it's not about trying to make yourself a lot of money um, it's using business for good the benefits of seaweed i think are pretty astounding, um, which, yeah, I was completely unaware of before Caramore came about and before I met Francois, so. Over the years, I've seen 
what climate change and overfishing and plastic pollution and all kinds of things that humans have done to, to our beautiful oceans. And that really weighs heavy on me thinking I'm bringing these two little kids up in this world and what's going to be left for them in 10, 20 years time. Trying to link the ocean and the land together but also with people as like the forefront of everything that it's doing and then taking this model that we've got into other communities where there's huge levels of poverty or there's fishermen who are kind of losing their business and losing their skill set. You know, it's, it's the whole combined picture of people and planet. So in a small way, I feel that Carrymore is trying to make that change, that we want to improve our coastal environments, we want to improve our local communities. And I think that's, that's what's a real driver for us. We're here to do our part for climate change as well as to try and create full-time year-round jobs for the local community.